Now, in this video then, this is a continuation of the previous video, which is going to show us how to calculate a rate of return on an investment. And you'll recall that this is an investment that's $12,000. From that investment, we're going to get $1,905 every year for 10 years. You set up your general equation for annuities. The big dollar amount is $12,000. The value of the annuity, 1905. Big dollar amounts at the beginning of the annuity stream. We used PVIFA. N is always equal to the number of payments, number of annuity payments. One a year for 10 years, N is equal to 10. What we're actually looking for is this little interest rate right here. Now, what we did before is we didn't solve for that directly, but we did solve for the interest factor. And if you take 12,000 by, divided by 1905, you get 6.2992. And that's your PVIFA with N equal to 10 and I equal to something. And this is what we're looking for. If you go to your PVIFA table and you go down the left hand column till you find N equal to 10 and then go across till you find 6.2992. Well, long story short, you're not going to find that interest factor. But it's somewhere between the 9% and the 10% column. And indeed, in the 9% column, we found 6.4117. Now, the question becomes, is the rate of return on this investment exactly 9%? Well, the answer is no, because when we did this math right here, this didn't turn out to be 6.4177. Therefore, the rate of return is not exactly 9%. And if you go to, if you look up your PVIFA at 10 and 10 percent, you find 6.1446. Is the rate of return on this investment exactly 10 percent? Again, the answer is no, because when we did the math here, we didn't come up with exactly 6.1446. So the rate of return is not 9 percent, and it's not 10 percent, but it's somewhere between there. Now. Whatever the rate of return is, and we don't know that at this point, we do know that the interest factor associated with it is 6.2992. Now, what you see up at the top up here, this is what I was taught was a, the pitchfork approach to interpolation. My professor was a city guy. He thought pitchforks had three prongs. Here in the country, you really know there are four prongs. I wanted to pass the course, so I just went with it. So there's three prongs on this pitchfork. We know the ends of the prongs. We know the rate of return is somewhere between 9% and 10%. And we know the interest factors associated with 9% and 10%. The unknown is always in the middle. We don't know what the rate of return is at this point. But we do know the interest factor associated with it is 6.2992. Now, what you see up here at the top, that's what I call setting up the pitchfork. And that really turns out to be the most difficult part of this problem. As a student, a couple things you should know. When you look at the pitchfork, the upside of the prongs always reads like a number line, like a ruler. The small number, 9%, is on the left. The larger number, in this case 10%, is always on the right. The unknown is always in the middle. As a student now, you have these interest factors here. Always ask, when you get to this point now, always step, step back and say, you know, is this interest factor somewhere between this interest factor and that interest factor? The answer to that should be yes. If it's not, then you've made a mistake. Okay? But this interest factor is always somewhere between this interest factor and that interest factor. Now, this is indeed what I call the pitchfork, and that's you set up the pitchfork at that point. To find, to interpolate, to find the rate of return now, we're going to set this larger number on the right up here, that's equal to A. The smaller number on the left is always equal to B. This interest factor minus this interest factor is going to be X. So 6.4177 minus 6.2992 is 0.1185.
that's x. y is going to be this interest factor minus this interest factor. So to calculate y, you would take 6.4177 and subtract 6.1446, and that gives you 0 0.2731. That's y. When you interpolate, whatever it is you're looking for, in this case we're looking for rate of return, internal rate of return, it's always equal to x over y times a minus b plus b. In this case, the internal rate of return, x over y, 0 0.1185, y is 0 0.2731. We're going to multiply that now by a minus b. 10% minus 9% is 1%. Don't use 0.01, just 1, okay? And then we're going to add that to 9%. And indeed, if you take 0.1185 divided by 0.2731 and multiply it by 1%, you get 0.4339%. And we're going to add that to 9%, and we get 9.4339%. And that's the rate of return, the internal rate of return on this investment. If you wanted to do this in your calculator, present value is where you would put the cost of the investment. The cost is an outflow. So in present value, in present value, you put a negative 12,000. The payment is where you put the value of the annuity. This investment's paying us 1905 every year for 10 years. So payment is 1905, those are yearly payments. How many of those did you get? That's N, that's 10. Have your calculator solve for I, and you'll get 9.4254%. And that's the rate of return on this investment. Is there a difference between this number and this number? Absolutely. Again, what's the cause of that difference? Is rounding. You know, we round off when we did these things. The interest factors are rounded off to four places. All that rounding error gives you this difference here. If you did this in Excel, and had Excel calculate your interest factors, had Excel do the math, it doesn't round off. If you did this in Excel, this answer and that answer would be exactly the same. When you're doing reports for bosses or clients, they don't really want to see the buttons you pushed on your calculator. You need to do something that's reproducible, that you can explain, that people can see. That's what this is. But do it in Excel, you'll get exactly the same answer. And again, technically, the calculator answer in, in our examples here is more accurate than what we've done uh, longhand.